So part one, neuroanatomy. When you look at the brain, this is a profile view of the human brain, and you can see the frontal lobe and parietal lobe are divided by central sulcus. So uh, when you find the central Central sulcus, you know the anterior to that line, the red line is a frontal lobe, posterior to that red line is parietal lobe. In the brain, the other big um, fissure or sulcus is the cerebrum fissure. So the cerebrum fissure is dividing the superior portion and the inferior portion of the brain, which is so above the cerebrum fissure is the frontal lobe and parietal lobe, and then below the cerebrum fissure is the temporal lobe. So if you look at the temporal lobe, it has a three line of orientation, anterior posterior orientation of the lobes. And then the rest of the small compartment is the occipital lobe. If you look at the midline portion of the brain, now you see a very different features. So centrally, you have this white metal bundle, corpse carosum here. Uh, and then you can see the small line, this is a phonix, which this is the limbic system. And then around the corpus sclerosum, this is the syndrome, which is also the limbic system. And then you can see the big, deep fissure here. This is a parietal fissure, which is dividing a parietal lobe and an occipital lobe. So the parietal lobe occipital border is very well defined by the medial aspect of the, uh, the brain. And Again, the frontal lobe and parietal lobe are divided by uh, central sulcus. If you look at the medial aspect, the central sulcus is a very, very small notch like this. Um, so I will go over how to identify those areas uh, by MRI scan in the later on. Um, the cingulate gyrus and the frontal lobe are divided by cingulate sulcus, which is also a very well delineated sulcus. Uh, you can see it here. Now, the, talking about the function of the brain, so once you define the central sulcus, anterior to the central sulcus is the frontal lobe and parietal lobe, but just uh, next to the central sulcus is a precentral gyrus, just posterior to the central sulcus is a postcentral gyrus. Precentral gyrus is a primary motor cortex, postcentral gyrus is a primary sensory cortex. So those are one of the, the primary functional um, entity called idiotypic. So those cortex has only one function, precentral gyrus is mainly concentrated in the motor function, postcentral gyrus is a sensory function. The similar uh, primary cortex is seen in auditory cortex and visual cortex. So the Auditory cortex is the Heschel gyrus, which is the posterior portion of the superior temporal gyrus here. And then visual cortex is, uh, you, you can't see it in the uh, lateral view, but medial aspect you can see not much better. Uh, the, the, you find the calcarine fissure, and then around the calcarine fissure, that's where the primary visual cortex. But as you can see, the motor sensory and auditory visual, those are the primary um, basic function of the human being. And then those are located uh, frontal, motor, parietal, sensory, auditory, temporal, and visual occipital lobe. So all these four lobes have a primary cortex. Well, you can't really live just having a, this primary cortex. Um, one of the other components of the brain function to be able to use as a daily practice is, for example, language. Language is have a motor and sensory components, but you can see a broker's area as a motor component, the expression of the language, and then Wernicke's area is the reception of understanding of the language. And then these two are connected by acute fasciculus around the cerebrum fissure to form the language circuit. So, um, defining where the broca and Renike's area can be an easy way to understanding the language circuit. Um, moreover, you can see an associative cortex next to this primary cortex of motor, sensory, visual, and an auditory cortex. The associative cortex is um, uh, just next to those primary cortex. So, uh, 
associated motor is next to the motor cortex, associated sensory is next to the sensory cortex. Those helps um, the uh, primary function to be more sophisticated in fashion. So the visual and auditory cortex in between, you have a, um, another associative visual associated with auditory cortex. Those things can have help to um, interpret visual information to the sensory information, visual information connected to the memory function, for example. So from the visual cortex, when you see something, there are two pathways. One is going to the parietal lobe. The other is going to the temporal lobe. The visual cortex to the parietal lobe pathway is called where pathway. So if you see something and then you understand where you are and you know the space, you understand the space around you, that's the where pathway. What pathway is when you see something, this information is related to the temporal lobe, more to the mesial temporal lobe of the hippocampus, which is a memory center. So you can see the see things is interpreted as what this is. You know the name, you know how to use it, so those informations are uh, going into this lower pathway of the temporal lobe. So imagine you have a degeneration of the parietal lobe, then you lose your space information, so you don't know where you are, for example. So you go out and you don't know how to go back to your home. Oftentimes happening in the Alzheimer's disease patient is a problem of the parietal lobe. If you have a big infarction on the inferior temporal lobe and you can't recognize things, so you can see the some object you don't know, you don't remember the name, but not only not remember the name, you don't know how to use that object, for example. So those are the specific pathways related to these anatomical locations. Then the last one is a heteromodal cortex. This is the highest functionality uh, unit. And then this is unique to the human being. So the frontal portion of this heteromodal cortex is related to the motivation, inhibition, emotion control. So this is all this um, brain function is well controlled and then kind of regulated in a way in those areas. The parietal portion is a confluence of visual, auditory, and sensory um, the functions. So this way here is a reading, writing, and calculation. Those more higher uh, kind of functional uh, component is uh, treated in this area. So that's why each brain component has a functions and then correlated with the primary cortices. So if you understand, if you want to understand the brain, the brain is uh, not like uh, each portion has a different function, it's they work together uh, communicating each other as a some network uh, unit. So that's the first part of the uh, brain function. So now you know the brain has a whole, you have primary cortex and associative cortex and the heteromodal cortex. And then you can see the units are located in different locations, but communicate each other. And then working as a complete unit. And then, so this will be interesting to know when you look at the imaging, identifying those locations.